Hello and welcome to another Mage Tower Guide. This time we're going to be going over the Restoration Druid. So as always, we'll start off with our consumables. We're going to need flasks of the Whispered Pact, potions of prolonged power, mastery food of some sort, and drums of fury or the mountain. Either one, they're the same thing. Moving on to talents, I went with Abundance over Scenarian Ward, though Scenarian Ward is really good and might be better for some people. I just liked having the consistent value you could get out of Abundance, as you're going to have regrowth up a lot of the time anyway, and getting especially the extra crit on regrowth really helped me specifically at the end of the first phase. So I would mess around with this one. This is definitely something that is debatable. I think a lot of people end up using Scenarian Ward, as it's just really good burst healing, and will pretty much always go off on anyone you cast it on almost immediately. So either one of these is competitive. It's really up to you. I went with Abundance. In the second tier, I went with Displacer Beast over Renewal. I'm kind of a movement junkie when it comes to talents that give you extra movement. So I just like being able to get out of situations a little bit faster. In the first phase, you're going to have to deal with some fixates that this will really help you get away from. Um, renewal is just doesn't give you enough value on a consistent basis. It's a really long cooldown for what it does and can only be used on yourself. So yes, it is a really good get out of jail free card for yourself. It just doesn't have enough value attached to it for me personally to really pick it over extra movement. But both of these have their pros and cons. So I would just pick the one that fits your play style the best. In the next tier, I went with Guardian Affinity. The extra 6% damage reduction is just always good. Moving on, we're going to want Typhoon over Mighty Bash, as it is on a much faster cooldown, which for this challenge makes all the difference. In the next tier, we're going to want to take Incarnation, as there's a couple parts where we're going to need to counter burst damage, and this is one of the best ways that we can do that. In the next row, I went with Germination, as it gives you the most consistent healing. And finally, I went with Stonebark, as it's the only one that really fits the situation. Moment of Clarity is just too random, and Flourish is better used in a raid environment. And that's pretty much all my thoughts on the talents. Now this is normally where I would break down the fight and kind of go over all the mechanics individually, but since this is such a long challenge, I'm only going to break down the first phase as there's a lot kind of going on right at the beginning, but everything else I will just kind of explain during the fight itself. So in the first phase, there are three adds you're going to need to deal with. The first one is called a Corrupted Risen Arbalist. They have two abilities. The first one is called Dead Eye Shot. This just does damage and there's really nothing else to it. It's just their auto attack. Their second ability is called Mana Sting. This is a blue arrow that will point out from the Arbalist towards you. If you are hit with this, you will take a large dot as well as your mana will start being burned away. If this happens, it will almost always lead to a wipe, as mana conservation is a big part of this challenge. So you'll want to position yourself in a way that the arrow hits someone other than yourself, and preferably the tank. Just make sure you're ready to heal them back up, as the debuff does do a lot of damage. The next enemy we have to deal with is called a Corrupted Risen Mage. It only has one ability, which is called Arcane Blitz. Each time they cast this, they will gain a stacking buff, which increases its damage. What we'll want to do is cast Typhoon on him during his cast at around 4 or 5 stacks, which will give it enough time to reset and keep the damage under control. And the last enemy we'll have to deal with is called a Corrupted Risen Soldier. They have two abilities, the first of which is called Knife Dance. This will do AoE damage to your entire group. And their second ability is a Fixate. This will usually be cast on you, and they will start chasing you around. Just try to keep your distance from them the best you can. So that's all the individual mechanics of all the enemies we'll see in the first phase. So let's just go ahead and jump into the full kill video and I will explain everything the best I can as we go. Okay, so for the first wave, we're just gonna be fighting one Arbalist. So since no one's taken damage yet, I'm just gonna pump in some damage of my own just to help out the group and kill it a little bit faster. As more damage comes out, then I'll switch to healing. So here's our first mana sting. You don't even really have to move for it as the warrior will always run up and start attacking him. And you can get to see the debuff on the warrior, get to see how much damage that does. So you're prepared for it for the next round. So we're just gonna finish this guy off. And the next wave is gonna be one mage and one arbalist. So we're gonna be focusing the mage here because we gotta interrupt his cast, but make sure you're paying attention to your positioning. So when the arbalist jumps back, we can still position ourselves in a way that it's not hitting us. So here's that fourth stack. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt him right there with Typhoon. 
and that's enough to reset the stacks. Now you might have seen there that the hunter was actually the one who got hit by the mana sting. Always be aware of who ends up getting hit by it as they will take a lot of damage. So it might not always be the warrior, so be aware and heal them as accordingly as you can. So there's only the Arbalist left, so I'm gonna focus on trying to get everyone topped up. So we're going into the next wave at as full health as we can. And the next wave is gonna be one mage and one soldier. So we're gonna to get to see knife dance from the soldier, which will do AOE damage to the group. So you'll see that coming out, and this is where I'm gonna use a wild growth to help counter that. And now focusing on interrupting these stacks of arcane blitz. So I let him get to five here, and then I push him back so he doesn't get to six. So you notice I also hit the soldier. Whenever you can also hit the soldier with Typhoon, it's just extra value as that way you're pushing him away from, him, from you during that fixate, so he's doing less damage to you and just having to chase you down. So if you can do that, that's always a bonus. So here I'm gonna get fixate again. This time I'm just gonna use Displacer Beast to get away. So anything you can do to increase the distance between you and the soldier when he has the fixate, is awesome because they will do a lot of damage. So just like before, making sure everyone's topped up. And on this one, we have one mage and two soldiers. So we're gonna get a lot of AOE damage coming out here and this is where we're gonna want to use Tranquility. So here I'm gonna go ahead and use Tranquility. Everyone gets really low and I'm gonna make sure I'm running away during this and then interrupting that Arcane Blitz right at the end there so that I can make sure that I'm keeping the damage to a minimum, as well as knocking the soldiers away from me as they were both on me there. So that's where it gets really dicey. I would personally suggest using Tranquility. It is a lot of AOE damage. And then on this one, make sure you're having that wild growth. Use a Vortex right here. That's what I use there. So that will help keep them off of me during this fixate. Puts a slow on them, pulls them back to the original location. It is extremely good for keeping the double soldier phase off of you when you need it to. Just a lot of AOE damage in this phase and they can easily get spread out with all the running away you have to do. So things like uh, efflorescence isn't nearly as good as something like wild growth, but keeping everyone hot, hotted up as much as you can will be really, really helpful. So we'll finish this wave and then we'll uh, move on to the final wave which will be one mage, one arbalist, and one soldier. So again, mage is taking the main priority here. And as you can see, I use incarnation almost right away as there's just a lot of damage going out. And I will be spam using regrowth as it is now instant cast in incarnation and will really help keep everyone up. Now I accidentally let this go to six, which was a really terrible idea, but I do knock it away there just be a little bit more cognizant than I was about what stacks we were on uh, as that will just wreck your group really quickly. You can see the rogue gets the debuff there. Again, as long as it's not on you, it's not the end of the world. Here I kind of get out of position as I didn't really have anywhere to go. I needed to run away from the fixate. I managed to make it land on the rogue again. I kind of saw where it was as I was running away. The main thing here is just survive. Use whatever cooldowns you can. I didn't use the drums for this phase, I probably should have, would have made it just easier. Uh, my gear definitely carried me through a good amount at this point, but yeah, once you get done with at least the mage and the soldier, it gets a lot easier, it, especially the mage, so you don't have to worry about standing in melee. Once you get that interrupt in, you can be pretty much anywhere, as long as you're close enough to get someone else hit with the mana sting. But that's pretty much the first phase. I know that was a lot going on, so, just be prepared of how much damage is going to be going out, how much is going on in the first group or in the first phase, and you'll be fine. So you can also interrupt the Arbalist. I didn't really talk about it. But you can also interrupt the Arbalist with uh, Typhoon, but make sure you're saving that for the mages during the phases as that's way more important. Here, you'll have plenty of time to drink up, get back your buffs, back, wait for your cooldowns if you need it, and then you'll be ready to start the next phase whenever you're ready. Okay, so once we have all the cooldowns we wanna have back, we can enter the room and start the next phase. So you're gonna be by yourself for this, so you only have to worry about healing yourself and dealing damage. So the first thing we're gonna be fighting here are these flickering eyes. Make sure we're focusing these guys down one at a time. When they die, 
they do extreme amount of AoE damage around them. So we're gonna wanna make sure we're healing ourselves back up after each one. Does about, I think probably say about 30% of your max health or something like that. So make sure we're not killing them too quickly. And take your time, you have about five minutes during this phase. So you don't need to really rush it. It might feel like you need to rush it with that time limit as you see on the right hand side of my screen. But honestly, you have plenty of time to get this done. Just make sure you're not like idling or anything like that. Just kind of work your way through it, but don't force yourself to go too fast. Here, I'm gonna pull this pack back into this room so I don't have to deal with the orbs that are in the next room. And I'm just gonna dot everything up and then focus the dominator. So the reason why I do this is the dots are more than enough to kill off the fell bats. And no one does anything special. This is just all auto attack damage that they're dealing. So there's nothing to be surprised about. And just focusing down the dominator is just going to be the fastest way to clear the waves. So in the next room we have these orbs. All you have to do is moonfire them and they will become inactive. Basically make sure you're not passing through them while they're active. So there's going to be four spirits in the next room. The first one will be running around. We want to cleanse that one as fast as we can. The other three are all constantly taking damage and need to be healed back up to full. Now you're gonna to have to target these guys individually and put your hots on them and do this relatively quickly. And the timer will start for these guys as soon as you open the door. So make sure you're healing those guys up as fast as you can, spread them around. If they run out of health, they will then start attacking you. So make sure that you are fully focused on making sure you're healing them evenly so they don't die. Now you saw that, you can laugh at me all you want. I accidentally flipped my uh, spell, uh, spell bar down at the bottom, so I started not knowing what I was pressing. And you can laugh at me again because I get hit with Mana Sting because I was just a tad bit late on my Typhoon. But now you get to see what the Mana Sting does and how much uh, mana it sucks from you, so there you go. I even get hit with it one more time because now I don't have anything to interrupt this guy with. But it's all fine. You're doing this by yourself. You got plenty of time, but I will have to drink here, so... Yep, that's what happens when you're off with your timing and thinking you can squeeze out one extra ability when you really can't. But, like I said, you have plenty of time, so mistakes are easily, easily recovered from. So with this gauntlet here, we're just going to want to Moonfire or Sunfire our way through. It doesn't really matter, especially if you want to use Sunfire for the, the grouped up ones and then just move up as fast as you can up the stairs. They come back pretty quickly, but it doesn't really matter too much. You should be having no problem with this. So here in this room, we have three more flickering eyes and one corruptor. We just want to focus the corruptor down as fast as we can. Same thing as, a, as in that first room. Kill the first thing as fast as you can and then just work your way around the room one eye at a time. So after we're done killing the eyes, we will be done with this intermission phase. And as you'll see, I'll have about a minute and 30 seconds left after killing the last eye, and that's with a pretty good amount of mistakes right in the middle. So you should be fine. Just take, take your time, make sure that you're doing everything the way that you want to do it and not getting too far ahead of yourself and taking too much damage. So here we can rest up again, we can eat, we can get our cooldowns back if you used any, and then once we click on the gate, we'll start the last phase. Okay, so a lot going on here. So in the first part of this phase, we're gonna have to be trying to keep our group alive as they will be fighting each other. And then at the same time, we're gonna have to deal with waves of three spirits that we will have to heal and then make their way to the center of the room towards Erdris. If they make it to him before they're at full health, then they will be something we'll have to fight later. And they will be one of the three enemies that we had from the very beginning of this challenge an arbalist, a mage, or a soldier. We really want to make sure that we don't have to deal with that. We don't want to have to fight them at the end because they'll all become active at once, any of the ones that get through. So we really want to make sure we're healing them before they get to Erdris so we don't have to deal with that, which is what we'll do here. So right away, I'm putting down as much hots as I can on my group. As you can see, the warrior and the rogue are taking the most damage as they're directly fighting each other. So I want to make sure they're my focus right at the beginning. And then here come the spirits, so they're at the three corners. What I'm going to use for this first wave of them is Tranquility, just to go ahead and get it used, get it on cooldown, and it will pretty much heal them to full. Now you see as they get fully healed, they'll kind of stop where they are. 
and we need to do this with eight different ones of them. We only need to do eight, we don't have to do the full nine. So on that last wave, you only have to focus on two of them. So on this wave, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is use incarnation, go ahead and start, start uh, hotting up the spirits, and then start spam casting my regrowth on them. Now, right there, I went ahead and popped my drums. And the reason why I waited so late to do that is so it would carry over into the next wave of spirits. So incarnation is going to run out before the next wave of spirits, but I wanted to make sure I still had all of hero so that I could make sure I get full usage out of it for this wave. So again, I'm just going to be kind of tossing around my heels, trying to focus on getting them all healed up. And once I get the last one to full, that will end the phase. Now, if you don't have, if you didn't get let any of them get to Erdris, it will pretty much immediately start the next phase. You can drink here. I want to remind everyone that you can drink right in that little mini phase there as well. So I go ahead and get myself back topped up with mana. And then I go back to healing. So Ignite Soul is a debuff you're going to get on yourself it will do the damage to the group based on how much health you have. So you wanna be at really low health, so it does basically no damage. That was cutting it a little bit close. <laughs> so make sure you're also towards the sides of the room and slowly work your way around the room so you're not running out of space. So right here is a good amount of health to be at. One trick you can do is to start casting something like healing, uh, healing touch on yourself and then right or so it, so it expires, so the cast goes off right as Ignite Soul explodes. That way you're getting a nice burst of heal right after Ignite Soul goes off, and you don't have to worry about immediately dying from him jumping on you. So he'll just keep jumping on you over and over and over again, and you wanna just kind of make sure you're spreading this around the room. So there I go, he jumps on me, and get to the edge of the fell, heal up the group, and keep myself rather low. And that's just repeat until we win at this point. So don't go quite as low as me. Each, uh, each jump does about 15% of your health, or at least that's what it was doing for me. So you want to keep yourself in a way that you can still survive the next jump that's going to be on you. But again, if you're anywhere above like 50% health when Ignite Soul goes off, it's going to be a lot of damage for your group. See, I was about 40% right there, and you saw how much damage goes out on the rest of my group. But it is all rather manageable. He doesn't do too much damage to the rest of the group. It's really just based off of the Ignite Soul and how much damage that does to you. So here you'll see that I kind of like sit in it a little bit just to make sure that it's not dealing damage. Here I'm going to pre-cast the Healing Touch so it immediately goes off after Ignite Soul does keep moving around the room. I kind of run out of space towards the end. I didn't really have it set up quite the way I wanted to. This was only, I think this is the first time I got to this phase or something, because once you get here, it's fairly easy. It's mainly just the opening phase and the spirit healing phase. So after that, I've got this one spot left and that's all you need. And that's the whole challenge. Hopefully that all makes sense. Hopefully I was clear on everything. If you have any questions, please let me know. I know that I was rushing through this one, but I'm really committed to trying to keep these videos as short as I can, as it's really easy to go overboard with over explaining things. And I might have under explained it on this one. So please let me know if I under explained it. Please let me know for the next one that I do, if I need to go in a little bit more detail, maybe slow it down. I feel myself certainly rushing to get through it. It's just a lot of information, a lot of things happening at once. But if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll see you in the next video.